The flagship titles of the PlayStation 4 console have pretty much all now gotten their own respective sequels on the PlayStation 5 console, and in my personal opinion they've all pretty much missed the mark in some sort of regard, from the extremely controversial Last of Us 2 Remastered, to the story that essentially misses the mark on God of War Ragnarok due to it lacking focus and the kinda just boring Horizon Forbidden West. Spider-Man 2 unfortunately falls into a very similar box due to the decisions that they made in the storytelling and the lack of focus in that title. The issue is that these games essentially are built on the same house but with a different coat of paint. What I mean by that is that the gameplay and the foundations of that title are essentially the same. The same level design, the same characters we all know and love and the same gameplay which we've gotten pretty much well acquainted with but with some sprinkles laid all over the cake. The problem is, is that now all our focus is now going to be placed onto scrutinizing the quality of the story and this is where Spider-Man 2 misses up. Venom. So far in modern entertainment there hasn't been a superb rendition of Venom onto any significant screen other than the comic books. Insomniac Studios have unfortunately fell into the same trap that Sam Raimi was forced into on Spider-Man 3 way back in 2008, having too much attention split over too many significant characters. In that movie time was spent on Harry Osborn, time was spent on the Sandman and time was spent on Eddie Brock's Venom. The issue is that none of these characters got ample developments to give us a satisfying conclusion and unfortunately Insomniac have fell into that very same issue under their own volition. They gave us Venom but they also gave us Craven, and they also gave us Harry Osborn which needed his own arc and they've given us a whole nother Spider-Man Miles Morales who needed his own arc to conquer as well. Being stretched too thin is definitely an understatement when we're considering the story this time around. Putting the entire situation very very plainly, Craven the Hunter and Miles Morales are essentially insignificant characters that are essentially they're great from a gameplay perspective and from a structural perspective. Craven is necessary to be essentially the villain of the week in which we're trying to defeat while we're developing Venom and Miles Morales essentially is a fun and great addition to the gameplay experience and a way for Peter Parker to break out of his symbiote curse. The problem is that from a narrative perspective, Miles Miles Morales is not beneficial to the grand scheme of things. Now this can be definitely be debated but in my personal opinion I think the main villain and the main thing that Insomniac were chasing was to cover Venom and the symbiote aptly. Unfortunately due to them splitting all their attention over these significant main characters we lost focus from Venom and ended up resulting in a story that felt rushed and didn't properly give us the story in which we truly deserved. In Spider-Man 2 there are two main characters which take out the bulk of the screen time in the entire game but the problem is those weren't the two people that were exactly supposed to get most of the screen time. I think the main two people that should have gotten the bulk of the time on screen was Peter Parker and Harry Osborn. Harry was a new character which needed a lot of time and development for us to understand the type of person he is as we've seen many renditions of this character before on the big screen, on the small screen, on the animated screen, absolutely everywhere but we needed to find out what type of person Harry Osborn from the Insomniac universe was. Unfortunately we didn't get enough time to explore that or even Norman Osborn as a matter of fact. Miles Morales and Craven, in my personal opinion were just a hindrance in which we didn't need but were understandable from a gameplay perspective as playing as Miles Morales alongside Spider-Man is definitely a whole lot of fun but from a story perspective we're like bro you're just there for, for being there. His story with Martin Lee was okay but it wasn't the main focus in which we're looking forward to. So let's consider the main point on why Venom unfortunately doesn't work in Spider-Man 2. Unfortunately Insomniac went for scale instead of depth and that is probably the most significant issue. Venom's introduction into the story unfortunately didn't bring enough personal tragedy into the lives of Miles Morales, Peter Parker, Mary Jane or even the Osborns. By the end of it all where everybody's pretty much okay and the main villain which was the symbiote is essentially defeated. Instead they went for scale and essentially spread the symbiote throughout the entire city and made essentially Venom into this spreadable communicable disease that everybody can catch and give them a huge power up. This is quite odd and really really unnecessary because doing Venom in this way takes away a very strong story element that Venom is best known for and the symbiote is best known for, subtlety. The subtle changes in a person's personality that ends up destroying the relationships with those closest to us. Peter Parker definitely annoyed the people around him but he didn't 
destroyed the relationships of the people around him due to the venom and symbiotes essentially enhancing the stronger personality traits of that character. Peter Parker had the symbiote for a decent amount of time but there were not enough strong ramifications for him or the decisions he made during that entire time. I also think another problem with the way the symbiote was handled was essentially it was turned into some sort of monster that turned the host into some mindless being. I do think that was a mistake because it made the entire experience a lot more generic. I think another aspect where the potential was definitely wasted the most was in tackling personal tragedy. Spider-Man is known for being the hero that essentially suffers because the writers essentially hate him. But the thing is in Spider-Man 2, he went through no personal tragedy and the symbiote was the perfect opportunity to make Peter go through some sort of serious situation. Whether it was him failing to save or choosing not to save somebody because of his anger, that's a situation where we can really see the symbiote really corrupt a person and the best way to implement subtlety and him to realize and come to the realization that he needs to get the suit off not by turning him into some mindless monster or some strange entity. Harry Osborn on the other hand also went through a similar experience but as soon as he got the suit on he just went crazy and turned into the character that is Venom. His activities as Venom didn't create any strong personal tragedies that will continue and rise on in the next game to come. The thing is, Venom didn't have to be defeated in this game. He didn't hurt any one of the main cast significantly, physically or even mentally. He was essentially being taken over by this weird thing and he was going to take over the world. And the problem is, is that there was no personal investment from the player in defeating Harry or stopping him from being the symbiote. It was essentially, we have to beat the big black guy or we're going to be in a lot of trouble. A few ways in which the symbiote could have been better implemented is by making him truly truly hurt Peter or Miles where it hurts. Imagine Harry Osborn as Venom ends up killing MJ by the end of it all and ends up going away to contemplate the horrible thing in which he has done. Something like that will definitely hype everybody up for the subsequent sequel and the thing is how much stronger would the moment like that be knowing that Harry actually does have a modicum of control over the Venom symbiote. It would be extremely extremely interesting and even the possibility of him having a redemption arc as him and the symbiote become more cordial over time. This is just a simple example of how in which the Venom and symbiote can be made more interesting and more exciting and bring in the personal tragedy in which we love Spider-Man so much. Forcing Peter Parker to eventually have to forgive Harry Osborn for the horrible thing that he did by killing the love of his life. That's just a simple example of how it could have been done and from the player perspective we'd definitely be a lot more invested on seeing what's going to happen in the next game and we'd actually want to take Venom and Harry Osborn down and we definitely would be a lot happier as we wouldn't have to do those horrible mirrors Jane missions ever again. Hey bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. It's just such a shame that they missed the mark so much with Venom and this ended up just in the story lacking quite a bit.